guys are excited to play. Uh, coaches, it was great to get out here and work with them in a uh, you know this type of environment. And now it's just practice. I mean, a lot of practice. So it's good though. How long do you expect the uh, new blocking schemes? style of play to, to kick in and feel more natural. I, I think they're going to know what to do. Uh, it's just a matter of getting used to the techniques and the, uh, you know, the schematics that are a little bit different. Uh, and then it's just the repetition that creates those patterns and uh, where it becomes you know, muscle memory and not something that they're thinking about play by play. Dramatic change for the offensive lineman in terms of technique or scheme? Or well, I, there's a, I think in football there's a carryover from scheme to scheme. I mean, everybody runs some form of inside zone, you know, counter. It's just how you run it, uh, what the coaching points are, the, the technique, the specifics within that play, uh, aiming points. I mean, all those things matter. So uh, I wouldn't say they're all the same, but uh, there's you know, if you look across college football, everybody runs inside zone. So we're going to run it. So does everybody else, and we'll uh, need to get good at how we run it. What are some of the maybe early benchmarks you're trying to hit early in the early in spring? Uh, well, I, I mean, it depends on each player, each position group, offense, defense, special teams. I mean, there's just so many things to work on. I mean, uh, all of us got to get better. I mean, the entire program's got to get better. Coaches, players support staff, strength and conditioning, everybody's just got to show these, you know, incremental improvements every day and that's how you end up winning games, close games, you know, as opposed to being seven points from winning it, you're plus three or plus seven or plus ten. It's all those little things that show up, so that's what we're working on. We saw Sam Jackson on film. Um, what did you see seeing him out there today executing what you guys have been doing this year? Yeah, he's a great athlete, uh, sharp kid, and he just needs practice. He needs reps and practice. Uh, you know, the decision making at his position and the other positions, O-line, tight ends, receivers, running backs, they got decisions to make within these given plays. It's just not going out there and throwing one-on-ones. That's not football. That's, you know, it's not seven-on-seven seven seven can be beneficial, but we got to play the game. Those guys in our offense and defense, we need to get a lot of 11-on-11 11 11 to play the game. Officially speaking, is there a quarterback competition? Yeah, there's competition at every position. What we're focused on is guys improving. Yeah, we'll release the depth chart when it's appropriate to release it right now. Uh, you guys could take a stab at it, but we're just trying to get better as a team. You mentioned the other day guys who were out. Anybody else that was held out today? Uh, let's see here. Yes, we did. We had, uh, oh, Justin Williams Thomas uh, is unfortunately not going to be with us for spring. So transfer running back, he'll be out for spring. That was it, other than the ones we talked about. And Hightower? Hightower should be joining us uh, during spring. Uh, you know, really between he and the sports med staff, the return to play specialists, they're the ones that'll dictate how much. And uh, Williams, Thomas, and all the 10 guys that aren't, will they all be ready for the fall? Um, and we're anticipating that. Yeah, but some of these injuries, they're not, you know, they're not all the same. Yeah. So we'll see. What about Brett? Yes. You expect it? Yes. Him? Brett, we would expect back for the fall. How's uh, Stanley McKenzie's transition been back? I think it's been good. Uh, he's got to continue to work himself into shape. Uh, uh, but in terms of he, he has been here, he understands, you know, knows the people. Um, it's great having him back. So. He just got to, he needs weight room, conditioning. He needs to work with Coach Browning as much as possible and practice as much as possible. In terms of strength and conditioning, yeah, did you guys change anything in this off season to sort of fit the new style of play yes. that you're going to do? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything you can get into about trade secrets? Uh, well, I mean, conditioning is always a premium in college football. And, you know, certain styles of play, uh, you know, you're gonna, I mean, it's a non-negotiable if you're playing on offense that you gotta be in phenomenal shape. You gotta be able to go all day, so. Even more important than up-tempo? Uh, I'm sorry? Is it even more important in an up-tempo offense? Uh, well, yeah, on offense you control the tempo to a degree because you decide on when to snap the ball. Now on defense you have to train that way because 
you don't get to say whether we huddle and start the play the offense does but offensively you can control the tempo uh, to a degree and so if you're going to play with some tempo you better be ready physically to do that what does sam's running ability do to challenge a defense uh creates problem in uh, the run game because of the math you know you get 11 on both sides and when the quarterback is a threat to run it changes the math and the run fits so that is uh something that and it's yeah, Sam can throw the football now. He he's got a talented uh, he's got a live arm and he's got talent to throw the football. But he can really run. But from a defensive perspective, it's all math. Who's typically spying the uh, running quarterback? Is it safety? Yeah, I, you know that term gets thrown around so much. I don't. It's not really. You know, there's the defenses throughout college football don't use that term. Fans use it. Media uses it. But. Just, you know, once in a while there are people, especially in drop back pass game, where you'll have a, a second level guy or a, a line game where you are mirroring the quarterback or spying the quarterback. But in the run game, you know, the defense doesn't know what the run call is. So if it's inside zone one way or the other and they're reading a defender, you don't you can't say it's this guy over here if they're reading that guy. So you just have to schematically on defense account for the quarterback uh, based on what run you get. But to say well, it's always the Mike linebacker. Well, they might block him. So that changes. Now, in the drop back pass game, like I said, you'll hear that term, whether it's mirror or spy or whatever, but I think that term gets uh, thrown around a lot and it doesn't really carry a lot of water with most of the defensive coaches that I've ever met. Um, so what I would say is the running quarterback in the run game, uh, it changes the math because somebody's got to account for him. And in the pass game, you know, how many people you have with man eyes on the on the receivers and tight ends, well, if everybody's in man and has their backs turned to the quarterback, well, he can take off and run and do more things. So having somebody with eyes on him and then that somebody has to be able to tackle him. So you traditionally see certain coverages versus guys that can run uh, that you may not see versus somebody uh, who can't run. I mean, that's something that all defensive coaches take into account. Extending the field, how will that be able to help you guys and how much will that be key on offense for this year for you guys? Well, I uh, think it's just a, it's a plus one, a different type of threat. Um, and again, you know, the quarterbacks we want to bring in here, we want them to be able to throw and to run. And some guys do, you know, both of them great. Some guys run a little better than they throw. Some guys throw a little better than they run. And then there's kind of the extremes. But uh, uh, our job is to, you know, identify the, the skills of the quarterback and then build the offense to fit them, call plays and schematics that help that guy be successful. A lot of commotion at the end of practice. What happened on that play? We couldn't really see it. Always had a one-on-one -on -one competition between the offense. It was a receiver and a DB, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the who, offense won. Who was the receiver? Jordan King. He also had a great catch over here at the end of team. Jordan's got really good hands, so Jordan had the one-on-one -on -one win. It was a contested play and yeah, just something to get another way to compete you know, want, want those guys getting used to that each and every day Sam at QB pardon Sam throwing the ball uh, that was Fernando actually Fernando. yeah it was Fernando yeah. is uh, Jackson size a concern at all no I mean he's not the tallest guy in the world he's not the biggest guy but again uh, there's if you look across college football and pro football uh, they're there's a lot of different body types playing that position now. I think it's different than it was 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And the schematics adjust accordingly. What are you looking for from Monroe and maybe some of those other veteran receivers that are coming back and returning? What are you hoping to see from this spring? Yeah, leadership, consistency. Uh, Monroe, you know, you bring up Monroe. I mean, guys been here a long time. Uh, we, we have a lot of trust in him as a human being what he is as a football player. He's a tough guy. He, he is a great leader for our team. So I just want to see him continue in that role and set the standard for how we do things around here with his group. And then we want guys to push him, you know? And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's great having a guy like that in that room and on our roster.